Hello again. For today's drawing, I will be using the Derwent Inktense 36 set to start with. I will supplement that with the Derwent Inktense blocks and combine these with my new set of Faber-Castell Art Grip colored pencils. Because I'm using Inktense, I have to use watercolor paper. In this case, it is Canson XL watercolor cold press 140 pound paper. I choose to use the smoother back side of the paper. The subject will be Rihanna from the video Stay. As this is a how to, feel free to ask questions in the comments section below. I start out using a tan intense pencil to slowly shade in the face. You only need to apply a little bit of pigment with the pencil. I usually try to color inside my trace lines by a few millimeters or about an eighth of an inch. Then when I add water, I can use the brush to push the pigment out to the trace line. Normally you want to layer your ink tense colors to slowly build up your image. For this drawing, I am mainly using the ink tense to fill in the background and get a base color in which to add the colored pencil details to. I could attempt to add in the details with ink tents, but I find my brush skills are far from refined and it was my hope today to show you how you can combine the two mediums. There are several different ways to use the ink tents pencils and blocks. I like to apply small amounts of pigment on dry paper and then apply small amounts of water with the brush. You need to make sure that you apply water to all of the pigment on the paper. This will prevent you from accidentally mixing colors when you apply new layers. When applying the water and brush, I try to push the ink towards the darker sections of the drawing, as well as push the color out to the edge of my trace lines. Before I get too carried away with the main drawing, I decide to fill in the background, which is fairly straightforward. I use a combination of charcoal gray and ink black. Once I have a couple of layers on the background done, I get to work on the hair. I'm not really focusing on realism, so I decide to try something different with the hair. I start with saddle brown for some strands, add an ink black for others, and some touches of baked earth. With several layers of the background complete and the general layout of the hair done, I decide to move on to the face. I use ink black for the pupils, but foolishly forget to leave a white area for light reflections. I use tan to fill in the background for the face, saddle brown for the eyebrows, and fuchsia and red violet for the lips. I spend a little more time filling in the face and neck area with tan, then move on to the ink tense blocks. I'm using the 72 set of ink tense blocks and I highly recommend them, but be sure to purchase them on sale. I believe I picked these up for about $65 Canadian. I used the blocks to darken up the black sections of the hair and later to darken the background and other parts of the hair. These are great for backgrounds and you can get fairly intense colors if you want to use them for details. I now move on to the Faber-Castell Art Grip pencils to add details to the face. These are the less expensive counterparts to the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. They are not quite as intense in color, are hexagonal in shape, and don't come with color labels, but rather with numbers. As I want to move from left to right, to prevent any significant smudging of the drawing, I focus mainly on the left eye and the hair. For the hair, I use the black, several of the browns, Van Dyke Brown and 380, one I know to be burnt ochre and another that has a burgundy tint, which I believe is Indian red. I also put hints of gold, silver, and white into the hair. The color chart I have for the Art Grip pencils only include names for the 36 set, and I'm using the 48 set. This puts me at a slight disadvantage when I'm trying to explain which colors I'm using. You will note that I'm using the Prismacolor Premier pencil for white highlights. For skin tones, I use 3D3, which is a very similar color to the tan from the ink tents, and the pink is 329. Where I try to get a rosier red to the face, I use the magenta. For the eyes, I use a mix of yellow, green, 
those being 353 and 361, some touches of Indian red, the grays for shading, and black for the pupils. In the end, the eyes are too light when compared to the reference image, but I'm okay with that as it's something I tend to make a habit of. I add shading to the lips, fill in the teeth mainly with gray, some emerald green and light yellow highlights, and start to do the final touches on the face. All I really have left to do is the neck. This is where I botch things. The neck and shoulders should be fairly straightforward, but as I try to add the shadow under the chin, I go too dark. I struggle to blend the dark regions into the less shaded areas. As an attempt to fix things, I darken the rest of the neck, but then it is far too dark relative to the face. Finally, I decide to raise the white flag and put the finishing touches on the neck and shoulder, including the tattoos. I add ink tents to the tattoos as the pencils are not adhering well to the paper. This is one reason I struggled so much with the neck, as the paper was just too spongy and wouldn't accept any pencil crayon. It would, however, accept ink tents, which resulted in me darkening things too much. I will mention that if you're using better quality watercolor paper, you could apply a wash to the darkened sections and use paper towel to remove the pencil and ink tents. This doesn't remove all of the pigment, but it does tone things down a bit. I then went and added Prisma Color Scholar pencils for the final layers in the neck and shoulders. Since the Prisma colors have a much softer lead and were able to be applied to the soft paper, where the fabric castells were struggling. The final image shows the Rihanna without the fix. Needless to say, I hope to do better on my next attempt. Thanks for watching, and I should be back in a couple weeks with another video.